Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, again, we are live on Facebook right now. We'd love it if you would uh, check in and watch us on Facebook. And you can like us by going to our Facebook page, 1480 WHBC. Also, don't forget, they always live on Facebook forever and ever. So just be careful. Oh, look at Dr. Stan's over there laughing because, see, they live on Facebook. That could be big trouble. Anyway, uh, you can always check the video section of Facebook uh, to find them. And uh, we had a, we have a two-part show today, as I mentioned. And thank you to the folks from Altman and All Care and the Foundation for stopping by and talking to us. But our second hour uh, is with Jackson Family Practice. And I said to Dr. Stan Anderson, you know, I don't think I have you on every Wednesday morning, Dr. Stan, and I don't think I ever say that you are from Jackson Family Practice, do I? Um, and you know what? That's okay because <laughs> I, I basically my thinking any time that I'm talking with you is I want to make sure that I get information out that people feel comfortable with. So my intention is always. What can I do? What can I say? How can I bring out something that people will find meaningful? And, and I'm and hoping you do. that people do. Yeah, that. We, we, I, we always have a great response to all of the, the different topics, and, and it's always a great thing. But you are with Jackson Family Practice, which is yeah, te- let technically me, in North Canton. But um, tell, us, tell us a little bit about Let me the tell you how it all started. Yeah, yeah. So just let me kind of run you back through a little historical thing. So when I finished my medical school from the University of Cincinnati. I did my residency at Grant Hospital in Columbus. And then in 1989, I was hired to be the medical director of StatCare. So I worked at StatCare, and then in November, they asked me to be the director of the Stark County Jail. And so in 1989 to 1990, (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> I was the medical director of Stark of Stack Care, and then the Stark County Jail director. Um, I, I must say that there was quite a different clientele of the people that I saw between one venue and the other, um, and my intention was that I was originally planning on paying off my medical school debts. I was living in my parents' basement, and my intention was pay off my debts. And I was going to go overseas as a medical missionary. That was my original intent. Well, things changed. I met this amazing woman. Her name is Kathy. And Kathy and I got married. The pastor that we spoke to said, it's probably not a good idea to take your young bride overseas to a third world country when you're first married. So I was thinking, well, then what do I want to do with my life? If I'm not going to go overseas, how can I make my life meaningful and count for something? So that's when I decided, I think what I'll do is I'll start a new practice. My original thought was, should I just join a practice or should I start something? And I'm kind of an entrepreneur, so I thought, I'm going to start from scratch. So I started letting people know that I was going to start a new practice somewhere around April of 1990. And I left StatCare um, the end of July, July 31st of 1990, and started Jackson Family Practice. And it was in the old Shakertown Square there on Fulton on August 20th of 1990. And within, I would say, a week... I was making ends meet. It was um, income outcome was um, uh, equal, and it just kind of grew from there. From then, I took on a PA to help and then added um, more providers. And so now we have seven providers at Jackson Family Practice. We've moved twice to our current location, which is located in a beautiful building, which is in Jackson Township. And so we came up with a name. Some people ask us, how did you come up with the name Jackson Family Practice? Well, the answer is it's in Jackson Township. (laughs) I know, it's genius, but that's (laughs) what we decided way back when, uh, 33 years ago. So August 20th was when we started, and then we moved into our current building on November, excuse me, October 20th, 
of 2011. Wow. So we've okay. been there now for just over uh, 11 years. Um, it's a facility where we're intending to grow. And our latest growth is we have added an amazing physician assistant, <laughs> and her name is Meredith Seals. And so Meredith is now, she's been at the practice now since the beginning of last week, and she is loving it. She's already had full schedules, and uh, she's doing have, great. Have you gotten to know her very well? I mean, you know, do you know her very well at all? Tell no. me. I was wondering, is this really going to work out? Because I don't know whether or not she can really handle it. Oh, one minor trivial little detail. <laughs> she is my daughter. <laughs> and so I had no doubt at all she would do wonderfully. And so she's amazing. Um, she, is, uh, she, she always comes at things from a very... Uh, careful. She has a very um, kind demeanor. She approaches things thoroughly, and I really like that about her, as well as she is my daughter. <laughs> I was going to say, I learned that amazing. from you. So. Oh, very good. There you go. Good answer. Good answer. There you go. And and we're going to talk to Meredith in a second, but I do want you, I want you to talk a little bit for a second just about, um, because you were the you know, family physician of the year in the whole wide world, as I said on the radio, um, not really, but in Ohio, in the state of Ohio. Um, but you've, you've expanded, you know, your, I, I don't even really know how to term it, but, you know, you have expanded your knowledge and, and that's what I love about you because really when I talk to you, there's just so much there that, <laughs> that we can, that we can discuss on the radio and that we can talk and that even when you talk to your patients, um, it, it's like that too. Well, I try to speak in English <laughs> rather than in Dr. B's. And right. so yes. Um, yes. I found that people tend to like it better if I can make it so that they actually understand the issues that they're dealing with and what they need to do. Um, yeah, so back in, oh my goodness, this would have been a couple, about 12, 15 years ago, I got involved with the Ohio Academy of Family Physicians, rose up through the ranks. I was the former president of the Ohio Academy. And then last year, um, I won the award of being Ohio's Family Physician of the Year. So that was a great honor, and I've... Uh, I've enjoyed my uh, five seconds of fame, <laughs> and it has been uh, a delight. It hasn't changed who I am at all, um, and uh, so it is enjoyable to just see that my colleagues recognize that. Yeah, that's no, great. That's great, and I think a lot of it is, you know, um, you are a person who puts it into uh, layman's terms for folks, and they understand um, and that's why you're good on the radio with us in the morning because you explain to people the things they want to hear um, about, you know, cramps this morning. You know, <laughs> I'm going to go out and learn pickleball, okay? <laughs> so what do I do to help myself not get hurt trying to do that at the age of 61-something? <laughs> well, one of the things which um, you've helped me with is the more that I speak with you, the more I realize that, the normal thing that most of us physicians do is we really do feel the need to use the medical terms that we've learned. And you've kind of helped me to realize using those fancy schmancy medical words really doesn't make the situation better. So yeah. I want to thank you for helping me to be more real with the way in which I speak. Thank you, Pam. All right. Very good, Dr. Stan, Dr. Anderson. Uh, <laughs> when I say Dr. Stan at your office, they all look at me like I'm crazy. Who's he? Oh, Dr. Anderson. That's right. All right. We're going to take our first break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Meredith. And uh, because I, I do want to talk about uh, physician's assistants. That, that is something that is up and coming, not up and coming, but there's a lot of physician's assistants in offices these days. Many times you see a physician's assistant, not maybe your doctor. Um, so we want to talk about that, and I want to talk about her area of expertise and the things that she's uh, talking to folks about. We will do that here after we take a break. It is Health Week on News Talk 1480 WHBC.
This is Joe Cordell of Cordell and Cordell. Men, you fought hard for the role that you play in your children's lives. This Father's Day, Cordell and Cordell celebrates you the entire month of June. Join us every Friday for our live webinar series, Father's Fridays. There you'll receive much useful information from our panel of speakers. To register, go to CordellCordell.com slash Father's Day. Schedule an appointment with one of Cordell and Cordell's Cleveland area attorneys. 5005 Rockside Road, Suite 350, Independence, Ohio, 44131. You can host the best backyard barbecue. When you find a professional on Angie to make your backyard the best around. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Inside to outside. Repairs to renovations. Get started on the Angie app or visit Angie.com today. You can do this when you Angie that. Download the iHeart, Odyssey, or Radio.com app. Be sure to check out our website daily for the latest at WHBC.com. It's time for this week's Progressive Power Buy. Brought to you by Progressive Jeep Ram on Hills and Dales Road in Massillon. Each week, Progressive Jeep Ram offers huge savings on one special vehicle on the lot. But don't get it twisted. These deals are worth hustling for. Hey, it's Craig Sanders from Progressive Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Maslin. Save $6,000 off every brand new 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland in stock. It's been years since we've had this many in stock, and they're now on sale at $6,000 off MSRP. Example stock number D23218. Offer can't be combined with any other offer. All rebates to dealer. Dealer contribution may affect consumer cost. Additional fees not included. Offer and June 30th, 2023. Now that's a progressive power buy. Get down to Progressive Jeep Ram to get this great deal. Be ready to head down to Massillon when you hear the next progressive power buy. For 60 years, House of Loretto has been a haven of care for senior citizens in Canton and its surroundings. When the time comes that you or your loved ones cannot comfortably live at home, consider House of Loretto at 2812 Harvard Avenue, Northwest in Canton. Whether you need nursing service or the particular approach of respite care, the sisters and staff of the House of Loretto welcome the opportunity to assist you. For more information, call 330-453-8137. WWE returns to Cleveland's Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse with Monday Night Raw. June 19th, see the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. May the best man win. SmackDown Women's Champion Rhea Ripley. Seth Freakin' Rollins. Undisputed Tag Team Champions Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Intercontinental Champion The Ring General Gunter. The New Day. Becky Lynch and more. Tickets start at $20 at SeatGeek.com. This Father's Day, visit Boot Barn for quality gifts and personalized services. Gifts range from durable suede jackets to premium exotic cowboy boots, iconic western shirts, heavy-duty jeans, and work boots. We provide local same-day gift delivery with gift wrapping and a cart included. You can enjoy in-store pickup with $20 off your next order, and our team of experts can help guide you as you shop when you visit your local boot barn. Do you have heart failure and often hear... Those stomach issues ruined your birthday. You're too tired to play catch, Grandpa. Sweetie, you haven't touched your tools since the carpal tunnel syndrome diagnosis. If these seemingly unrelated symptoms sound familiar, talk to your cardiologist. Ask about transthyretin amyloid cardiomyopathy, or ATTRCM, a rare and underdiagnosed disease that gets worse over time. Learn more at connecttoyourheart.com. That's connecttoyourheart.com. Sponsored by Pfizer. When you order food for work on EasyCater.com, we've got your back. Real humans are here to help with your order every step of the way, making sure everything goes right, even behind the scenes without you knowing, confirming and double confirming with the restaurant that everything is on track. If there's a problem, thanks for calling EasyCater. Call us anytime, day or night, and we'll answer in seconds. We're right here with 100,000 restaurants, working hard to ensure the food arrives on time and is ordered. Order 24-7 at EasyCater.com. are on News Talk 1480 WHBC and uh, featuring Jackson Family Practice, Dr. Stan Anderson, and of course, um, 
Dr. Stan is on with me on Canton's Morning News every Wednesday morning at 6.20, so you can always uh, join in. Hey, we're live on Facebook, too, so you can um, join us right now if you would like to do that or take a look at the video if you don't have a chance uh, and you missed any of our Health Week broadcast this week. So, Dr. Stan, um, we had mentioned early this morning that you had a special person to introduce, a special guest to introduce, and so you, you introduced Meredith Seals, who is a, a new PA at your office, correct? That's correct, and Meredith is awesome. We love her. <laughs> <laughs> he says that, and he means it really, and she's his daughter as well, by the way, just so you know. Not that that means anything about how good she is at her profession. You well, know. it does mean that she's amazing. Yes. That's, the, <laughs> yes. that's the most important thing. <laughs> so we want to talk to Meredith a little bit here for a minute and um, maybe just fill us in on your background and tell sure. us, you know, um, how you got to where you are today besides the great things that your mother has done for you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, luckily I always had such a great role model in my dad. So I always knew that I wanted to go into medicine. That's something that I've known since I was a young child. Um, I worked at the front office at JFP. I worked there in one of my gap years after college. Um, and that was just, I always knew that I wanted to go into medicine. Um, but certainly medical school, the length of time required for that was very intimidating to me. And after the stress you know, that I experienced in undergrad, that was something that I wasn't necessarily looking forward to. Um, so I went to um, Asbury University, which is in Kentucky. Um, I met my husband there. I was a pre-med major, biology, psychology, um, but I wasn't, like I said, convinced on medical school just because another, you know, 10 years of schooling uh -huh. just did not seem right. ideal to me. Right. And luckily, working at JFP, I had worked and seen amazing physician associates um, at the practice as well, and I knew that that was something that... I could still work in healthcare. I could still diagnose, treat. I could do preventative medicine, which were all the things that I knew that I wanted to do. So I took a gap year. I got a credential in counseling because I think that counseling and understanding how to talk to people is incredibly important for medicine. And once again, learned that from my mm -hmm. dad. So um, I took a gap year and did that. And then I went to PA school. Um, I went to University of Finley in Finley, Ohio. Um, it was a 27-month program. So we do two years of didactic and then a year of um, rotations. So we do um, six week rotations, six to eight weeks. Um, different schools have different like time periods. There's certainly a lot of different PA schools in Ohio, but I did do one of my rotations at JFP because it was a place I was familiar with. I was happy to go there and work in, in family practice. Um, and after I graduated, um, and passed my board. So the C at the end of PAC just means that we're certified. Okay. So we have to take our, um, not only our test to graduate from PA school, but then after we graduate, we have to um, pass the national certification board exam. Okay. Um, similar to how doctors do it, we have to retake this every seven to 10 years. Um, so that is certainly, we are also accredited under the same, um, the American Medical Board, so, just like how doctors are. Um, so I took my boards, passed it. Unfortunately, this was at the time of COVID, so um, it was uh. a bit hard to find a job at first, but I did end up working in psychiatry. Um, I spent three years working in psychiatry. I was in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and I primarily worked in geriatric psychiatry. So I worked in nursing homes, assisted livings, me memory care units. I worked a lot with dementia, uh, but then of course with typical psychiatric illnesses like depression, anxiety, bipolar, schizophrenia, PTSD. So those were things that I was certainly seeing every day. Um, it was a great practice. I really enjoyed it. I did everything very independently. I would see my own patients, round on them, like I said, independently. Um, since I have that credential in counseling as well, I was able to provide some counseling techniques for them, which I still enjoy, and that's something that I'm excited to bring into family practice as well because that's something that we see every day in family practice or people struggling with different mental health concerns. Right. Um, so after three years of that, um, I always knew that I wanted to work with my dad, and so I decided to come back to Ohio. <laughs> and mm -hmm. luckily, they had a position open at JFP. They were generous enough to <laughs> provide that. And um, 
I've been there for a few weeks and I've loved it. And here it's you been are. Wonderful. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, when you talk about, um, you know, being a PA, mm -hmm. what what's the difference between that and, and say, a nurse practitioner? Absolutely. So, um, PAs and nurse practitioners are both considered mid-level providers. So we're not physicians. We don't go to medical school and then do our residency. Um, but we both can diagnose, treat, for, provide preventative medicine. There are different specialties, certainly, that nurse practitioners and PAs can be in. And like I said, I worked in psychiatry. Um, I worked with a lot of nurse practitioners in, in my psychiatric practice. Um, and that's very common. Um, but the main difference is that nurse, nurse practitioners, typically they'll go to nursing school. Um, they might work as a nurse um, for a few years or not, and then they will start nurse practitioner school. They are certified under the nursing board. So it's a different b board that is certifying them, and um, any like continuing education is all under the nursing board. Whereas PAs, we're under the American Medical Board, like physicians and our um, certifications and recertifications are all, all under that board as okay. well. Um, so that's the main difference is just in training. We are, um, PAs are, are trained to be providers, whereas nurses are trained to be nurses, nurse practitioners are trained to be nurses first, and then they become a nurse practitioner where they're trained more in the provider standpoint. So it's more with the basis of knowledge. Um, like I never, I never went to nursing school. That's not something, you know, I still know how to do um, a lot of the things that nurses do, but I never went to nursing school, or nor was I a nurse. That's okay. the biggest difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take our break for the news right now. Um, and when we come back, I want to talk about um, it, it seems to be more uh, PAs out there. We're seeing them more and more in doctors' offices, and I, which is a good thing, I think. It's helping the doctors. Um, and it's helping the patients. So we'll discuss that as we continue Health Week right here on News Talk 1480 WHBC. This is Joe Cordell of Cordell & Cordell. Men, you fought hard for the role that you play in your children's lives. This Father's Day, Cordell & Cordell celebrates you the entire month of June. Join us every Friday for our live webinar series, Father's Fridays. There you'll receive much useful information from our panel of speakers. To register, go to CordellCordell.com slash Father's Day. Schedule an appointment with one of Cordell. Bell's Cleveland Area Attorneys, 5005 Rockside Road, Suite 350, Independence, Ohio, 44131. Have you Googled yourself lately? Are there negative posts from an ex-employee or from a former client? Maybe an outdated news article or sensitive personal information about your family? Search engines don't always get it right. For right or wrong, it's your reputation on the line. That's where Reputation Defender by Norton comes in. One of the most trusted names in online reputation repair. Reputation Defender has been fixing people's search results for over 15 years. Their cutting-edge approaches help you to wipe away unwanted information in your search results. They also promote the good stuff so that it rises to the top, helping you put your best foot forward. Your good name is too valuable to leave to the whims of a Google algorithm. Take control with Reputation Defender. You can start by getting your free Reputation Report Card at reputationdefender.com. Or call 800-401-6681 to speak to an expert. That's 800-401-6681. Anywhere fans go to cheer on their team, there are behind-the-scenes MVPs, ensuring everything is game day ready. We see you, Joe, fixing seats so every fan can enjoy every game. And Allie, who keeps her stadium running smoothly from the moment the first game starts to the last play of the season. At Granger, you're our MVPs, and we're always here for you with supplies and solutions for every industry and 24 7 customer support. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. The internet can be an all you can eat buffet for identity thieves. Ugh, so full. Too many maiden names and social security numbers. Where'd you find those? By the password bar. Can't miss them. LifeLock alerts you to identity threats you could miss by monitoring your credit and bank statements. If your identity is stolen, a dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. No one can prevent all identity theft, but everyone can save up to 25% off their first year with promo code NEWS. Go to LifeLock.com. 
At Alter Care, we know that care delivered with compassion can sometimes be the best medicine. Our family of experienced health care providers see you not as a number, but as a person worthy of connection and support. Experience care that comes from the heart at Alter Care. A true home away from home for long or short-term care. To learn more about our committed team and comprehensive services in Alliance, Canton, Hartville, Louisville, or Navarre, visit with us at altercareonline.com. That's altercareonline.com. In 1966, Albert and Lucy Hosner founded Carpet by Hosner, selling and installing carpet. Today, their sons have carried on their tradition by offering carpet, luxury vinyl, hardwood, ceramic, area rugs, and installation. Do not make the mistake of thinking all flooring stores are the same. Hosner's Healthier Living Installation is the first antimicrobial flooring installation process. Visit the professionals at Hosner Carpet One across from Central Catholic High in Perry Township. Check out HosnerCarpetOne.com, where the installation does make a difference. At Simply Safe, we know during a break-in, every second counts. So our home security system is powered by 24-7 professional monitoring agents who use Fast Protect technology only from Simply Safe to capture video evidence and verify a threat for fast police response. Now install Simply Safe your way. Do it yourself or have an expert set it up for you with new Pro Install. Get 20% off any new system with Fast Protect monitoring at simplysafe.com slash radio. There's no safe. Like Simply Safe. When you buy a high efficiency twin tank water softener from Burndale Water Experts, you'll get soft water 24 hours a day and a free reverse osmosis drinking water system. Call Verndale Water Experts today. Verndale's Water Center. Into WHBC AM 10. Reliable as ever on News Talk 1480 WHBC. From the News Talk 1480 WHBC Newsroom. Ohio's Republican U.S. Senator J.D. Vance is retaliating against the indictment of former President Donald Trump. Vance says he plans to place a hold on all of President Biden's nominees for the Justice Department. The action will not stop Senate Democrats from confirming nominees if they have the votes, but it will lengthen the process. Two Michigan State University students are suing the school over February's mass shooting on that campus. The lawsuits filed by two survivors claim the university knew about lax security at Berkeley Hall and other places around the campus, but did nothing to correct those problems. Three people died in the February 13th shooting, and five people were hurt. Health advisors are backing the full approval of a closely watched Alzheimer's drug, which is a key step toward opening insurance coverage to U.S. seniors with early stages of the disease. The drug, called Lequembi, received conditional approval from the Food and Drug Administration in January based on early results, suggesting it could slow Alzheimer's progression by several months. The FDA now is reviewing more definitive results to decide whether the drug should get the agency's full endorsement. Insurers have now held off paying for the treatment until the FDA gives its full approval. A tough night for Tanner Bybee as the Guardians lose to San Diego 6-3. to They'll play again tonight. 9.05 is the pregame, 9.40 the first pitch, right here on 1480 WHBC. I'm Pam Cook. Your severe weather station, News Talk 1480 WHBC. Here's your AccuWeather forecast. Clouds and sunshine this afternoon. High for the rest of the day, 70, then becoming mainly clear tonight with a low of 50. Tomorrow we'll have clouds and sunshine with a thunder shower in the afternoon. High on Thursday, 76. Then look for some sunshine Friday, although hazy skies can return with a high of 71. This weekend, mostly sunny Saturday and partly sunny on Sunday. I'm Holly Holdren for News Talk 1480 WHBC. It's Jordan Miller. Anyone that has any parenting advice for us. Now, everyone does their own thing that works for them, is what I hear. And and I, I agree with that. But is there that piece of parenting advice that maybe helped you in those first couple weeks of having a child? Spend as much time as you can with your children. Be there for your children. Do not judge your children. You need to read to your children every single day. You take the time. I took my kids twice a week to the library, read to them every night, and you just need to be there. Live and local, 10 to noon, Monday through Friday on 1480 WHBC. Welcome back to Health.
Health Week on News Talk 1480 WHBC on this beautiful Wednesday. And uh, today we've had kind of a two-parter. Uh, started out with our friends from Altman and Alt Care, and uh, this hour we're talking to Dr. Stan Anderson, Jackson Family Practice, and also uh, Meredith Seals, who is a, a PA. Dash C, because that's important. She's <laughs> certified. And um, with the Jackson family practice, also happens to be Dr. Stan Anderson's daughter. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get over saying that. I just keep saying it. But, um, you know, we were talking, um, Dr. Stan, we were talking about um, the fact that Meredith is a PA. And, you know, and I hate, I always hate, you know, saying back in the day, but, you know, there was a time when you never heard of a PA or saw a PA and, and now there's kind of an influx of PAs and sometimes you see more of them. Why has that happened? Why does, has that occurred in the medical field? Yeah, a large number of things that are factors that are playing a role. The first is, is we can't graduate enough medical doctors. The second issue is PAs and nurse practitioners have filled a vital role in being able to have more providers available. So one of the things that, since I've done some international medicine, I can tell you that PAs and nurse practitioners, for the most part, are as good, if not even better, than many of the physicians that I have interacted with in other countries. And so um, you do not need to worry about anybody that is certified, the quality that they are going to be bringing forth is going to be par excellence. And so, yes, we use uh, physician assistants. You're going to be finding that almost every field is going to have physician assistants. Most of the ways in which uh, physician assistants are used is in primary care. Um, they see all of the common things. The things that are rare that um, you would be worried about if a physician assistant does not feel comfortable, they will usually refer to the physician. So there is a seamless entry, mm -hmm. and that way you can actually get into the physician quicker mm -hmm. if you need to when a PA ends up seeing um, you for something which is rare or unusual. And oftentimes during the consultation when we talk about what would be the best option, the PA can then go ahead and order the specialized testing that needs to be done. So you're getting that first step. And so PA's vital part, you're going to see it in every field more and more and more. And we talked earlier about, um, and, and I guess I just started noticing this um, when my mom was in the hospital, but um, you know, doctors aren't making the rounds in hospitals anymore. Um, you know, family physicians, you are relying on the hospitalists that are in the hospital and they're, you know, thank goodness for, you know, digital things and <laughs> technology these days. They're keeping in touch with you mm -hmm. as the family physician saying, here's what happened, you know, that kind of stuff. But you don't see your family doctor come into your room anymore or anything like that. Has that helped you? Is that a, do you feel like that's a good thing? So the biggest thing is, is when we ended up having a full schedule and we would be getting phone calls in the middle of the night when I was coming here to Altman and going also to Mercy. Um, one of the things that happened was I was usually sleep deprived because I was consistently getting multiple phone calls. Yeah. So as a result, it really inhibited my effectiveness, my ability to be able to be fully present when I am not getting good sleep. And so having hospitalists, which really started to be a thing over the past 10 to 20 years. It has revolutionized the whole way in which medicine is practiced because you end up not having as many quality of life interruptions. Specifically, it has made um, family medicine and general internal medicine something which is much, much more palatable. So it is a huge positive for the practitioners. Yeah, I would think that. Uh, it, that. That struck me. I didn't know that it was happening, and then I thought, boy, that, what a great idea that is mm -hmm. um, because you can't stretch you all, you know, way too far, you know, way too far. Mm -hmm. um, and and as, you, as you look at um, people coming – uh, to your practice, or it could be anybody's practice, but I mean, uh, when they say, well, you know, the doctor doesn't have an open appointment, but we have a PA, what's the reaction? Do, do some people have a hard time sometimes? I mean, you know, 
Or just people who, I would imagine they do. Sometimes, I mean, I'm just, yes. you know, because I want, <laughs> uh, people who are listening right now, I want to put their mind at ease. You know, mm-hmm. I've seen a PA, you know, my family members have seen PAs and it's great. It's great. You know, Myrtle, I'm going to let you handle yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I have certainly, um, interacted with, with patients who are very unsure. They're, you know, I normally see this person and like, are you really going to be able to help me? And the biggest thing, and I can speak specifically for Jackson family practice, we are really, we work as a team there. And Mm -hmm. that is something that I am so appreciative of. And that's one of the main reasons why I knew I wanted to go and work there. Not just the perk of being able to work (laughs) with my dad was, but it was because it is such a caring environment. And if you normally see, you know, a certain doctor, the good news is that they're going to be there likely at some point that week. So if there's a lot of concerns, they are always willing to let the PAs come out and ask them a question or um, make sure that they have the right treatment plan. And ultimately, that's what we're there for. We're, we're there to fill the gap in coverage so that people don't have to be waiting weeks and weeks to be able to see an appointment. I'm sure that it is probably waiting weeks and weeks to be able to see him right now mm-hmm. because his schedule is so full. He's very popular. Um, and that's a good thing, right? right people right. trust him and, and that is excellent. But um, we're there to fill that gap so that people don't have to be waiting weeks and weeks to get an, an issue addressed. And, you know, our notes all go to the same place. So certainly he can read a note if he sees a, um, a patient later on after I've seen them. Even just this morning, you know, I saw a patient and she said, well, I normally see this doctor. Are they going to be able to see my notes? Like, I just want to make sure. And continuity of care is so important. And that's something that we certainly try to really go after. Um, And like I said, luckily at JFP, it is a great teamwork environment where they do not ever make us feel like we cannot ask questions or just reassure and make sure that we've got the right treatment plan in place, which certainly I'm doing a little bit more than the other PAs because they're, um, they've worked longer than I have, but, um, it's, it's such a comfortable environment and, um, it's mainly just to make sure that people feel like they have healthcare providers that can talk to them in a timely manner and address their needs in a timely manner. Right. And, and people need, could could I just add one more thing to that? So if you ever have an issue and you want to go to say a minute clinic, or if you want to go to a stat care or Altman urgent care, you don't get to choose who you're going to see. You're going to end up seeing whoever just happens to be there. So you end up having sometimes a good experience, sometimes a not so good experience. It basically is the individual that you're going to end up seeing and how well are they able to make you feel comfortable that they're answering your questions, that they're making you feel like you've really been taken care of. At Jackson Family Practice, I have several patients that prefer to see our PAs. Our PAs are amazing. I mean, they're not just good. They are gooder than good. They're (laughs) the kind of people that you like talking to, and they're so compassionate. That is the number one thing that I've seen about all of our uh, PAs and all of the physicians is the compassion. It is the intent to try to do whatever is necessary to make you feel the most comfortable you can so that you get your medical problems taken care of. And I think we have an amazing staff. And she's right about the communication and the collaboration, the teamwork, because, you know, if you've been going to a doctor for a long time at at Jackson Family Practice, say, and they have all your records and you've been through this and you've had that test and I just had that shot and I, you want them to know that Mm -hmm. um, and you don't want any repeat anything. And, you know, so that's a, that's a great thing. That's Mm -hmm. a great thing. All right. We're going to take our final break and come back for our last segment. I want to talk to you about dementia. I want to talk to you about that because that's uh, something that you have had a special interest in. And and that's a big thing right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, a lot of people trying to figure out how to take care of uh, their elderly family members, their parents, all of those kinds of things. So uh, we will talk more about that here on uh, Health Week. You're listening to News Talk 1480 WHBC.
1-8. Offer can't be combined with any other offer. All rebates to dealer. Dealer contribution may affect consumer cost. Additional fees not included. Offer ends June 30th, 2023. Now that's a progressive power buy. Progressive Jeep. To get this deal, be ready to head to Massillon when you hear the next progressive power buy. For 60 years, House of Loretto has been a haven of care for senior citizens in Canton and its surroundings. When the time comes that you or your loved ones cannot comfortably live at home, consider House of Loretto at 2812 Harvard Avenue, Northwest in Canton. Whether you need nursing service or the particular approach of respite care, the sisters and staff of the House of Loretto welcome the opportunity to assist you. For more information, call 330-453-8137. WWE returns to Cleveland's Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse with Monday Night Raw, June 19th. See the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. May the best man win. SmackDown Women's Champion Rhea Ripley. Seth Freakin' Rhodes. Undisputed Tag Team Champions Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Intercontinental Champion The Ring General Gunter. The New Day. Becky Lynch and more. Tickets start at $20 at SeatGeek.com. This Father's Day, visit Boot Barn for quality gifts and personalized services. Gifts range from durable suede jackets to premium exotic cowboy boots, iconic western shirts, heavy-duty jeans, and work boots. We provide local same-day gift delivery with gift wrapping and a card included. You can enjoy in-store pickup with $20 off your next order, and our team of experts can help guide you as you shop when you visit your local Boot Barn. Do you have heart failure and often hear, Those stomach issues ruined your birthday. You're too tired to play catch, Grandpa. Sweetie, you haven't had a tool syndrome diagnosis. If these seemingly unrelated symptoms sound familiar, talk to your cardiologist. Ask about transthyretin amyloid cardiomyopathy, or ATTRCM, a rare and underdiagnosed disease that gets worse over time. Learn more at connecttoyourheart.com. That's connecttoyourheart.com. Sponsored by Pfizer. You guys are on. Go ahead. Back on News Talk 1480 WHBC, it is our final segment of Health Week today on this Wednesday morning, Jackson Family Practice. I have Dr. Stan Anderson with me today and Meredith Seals, a, a PA um, at Jackson Family Practice and also Dr. Stan's daughter. <laughs> and we, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but we'll uh, continue to um, discuss a little bit about M Meredith's kind of specialty or um, area of interest, I, I should say. But uh, dementia, let's talk about that a little bit because... Um, you know, this is something that so many people experience and now are talking about and trying to navigate. And, it, you know, it can be a really tough Absolutely. situation. Dementia is one of those diagnoses that I think everyone fears. It is something that a lot of people have in their back of their, their head whenever they come in with any kind of memory concerns. Um, and it is something, like I said, people fear. There are different types of dementia, though, and there are, um, you know, there's age-related cognitive decline, and then there's dementia, and these are different things, and that's something that's important to understand. But the, the biggest thing is if there are concerns, if you have concerns for memory loss, if there's a family history, any of those things, the biggest thing is to go and see your primary care provider. Um, they can do kind of a screening cognitive assessment for you to look for. There's different realms that, that will test um, because different parts of the brain can be affected by dementia. And that's kind of how we distinguish different types of dementia. Um, so doing a screening test with them, a cognitive assessment is very important. From there, you know, occasionally they'll refer to like a neuropsychologist and that'll be a longer testing that you would do. They might refer to a neurologist where you might get imaging done because Alzheimer's type dementia, certainly you can sometimes see um, changes on the MRI or CT of the brain. Um, atrophy of the brain is very common with that. So um, if there are concerns, it's important to go and seek help and talk about it. It's something people oftentimes feel afraid to talk about. They might be afraid of that diagnosis or they might feel embarrassed about it, but it's important to seek help when needed um, and for caregivers. I mean, yeah. that was something that I worked with a lot in my previous role was working with caregivers of those with dementia. 
the burnout there is, I mean, very intense. So um, there are certainly support groups that people can get involved with. Um, there is respite care, which oftentimes people don't know about, and that's so important if you're caring for someone with dementia because you need a break. You need a break when you're doing that. Um, but then, of course, there's the Alzheimer's Association website has lots of good resources for that as well. Um, but the biggest thing is, like I said, if there are concerns, you can always go to your primary care provider um, to kind of do that initial testing and just see where we are with, with memory. And how do you convince a person, you know, if it's not yourself, someone else, you say, I've got to, you know, we need to go and take you, really need to get you some help. Or, you know, how do you break that? How do you approach that subject with sure. someone? That can be hard. Different people certainly have different approaches to it, and I think that oftentimes people can be very resistant. Um, like I said, it's a scary diagnosis. Some people kind of just try to ignore it, but approaching it with, um, you know, Oh, this happens to a lot of people. It's not something that you need to be ashamed of. It's something that you can seek help for. Um, I think is incredibly important to approach it from that perspective of it's something we need to address. We need to, you know, do the assessments that we need to do in order to get the official diagnosis. Um, but then seeking help and getting those resources when needed is important as well. And I've always heard that that folks that things like UTIs mm -hmm. can bring on a sure. type of dementia. Is that true? So we look for dementia versus delirium. Delirium is like would be considered like a UTI. It can cause that confusion, memory loss, all of those things. Um, there are certainly different other concerns that can cause a delirium type rea um, type situation. So. If you're going, you know, to the hospital for um, altered mental status, that's what they're going to look for. They're going to look for those delirium precautions. Um, they're going to put in place certain things, you know, making sure that people always know what day it is. That's a simple thing to pre help prevent some of that delirium. Um, but delirium is short-lived, whereas dementia is a okay. chronic condition. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. because I always... Um, you know, you hear people say, and then and it comes back. You you know, once you would get rid of that infection, then then you kind of get your cognitive ability yeah, back. Correct. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Okay. okay. Exactly. Um, also, talk about like mental health. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, there there's there's a segment of the population out there that um, certainly needs help, and people. That's another thing people are uh, afraid to talk about. Absolutely. It's something that I really care about and am passionate about is supporting people's mental health. And like I said, I worked mostly with ger in the geriatric population. And the interesting thing is that depression can actually mask itself as, as dementia. So we rule out depression first when we're looking at the dementia diagnosis because when people are severely depressed, they can have memory loss. They can have difficulties with motor function and difficulties in their daily living. You know, they forget things and they just don't seem themselves to others. So depression is certainly something that in the dementia diagnosis we have to rule out. But in general, I, I'm thankful that I feel like in our, in this generation, this day and age, people are a lot more comfortable talking about yeah, their mental health. Yeah. And I think that's really encouraging. Um, there are also a lot more counselors and mental health providers out there now, which is good. You know, for a while, I know that people had a lot of trouble getting into any sort of a counselor, getting any sort of mental health help. Um, but it's something that most primary care providers are very comfortable with. I think pretty much everyone at Jackson Family Practice is very comfortable treating um, mental health concerns like depression and anxiety being the most common. Um, but there's certainly plenty of resources out there, which is great for mental health concerns. All right. Well, gosh, I, I could go a whole another hour with the two of you. Honest, I know I could. <laughs> I know that because with Dr. Stan on Wednesday mornings at 620, I could talk to him. We, we go through 10 minutes like it's nothing, don't we? Oh, my goodness. But it's so fast and it's so fun. It and is. It, it is. is it's just, great. It's great. My hope is, is that the people that are listening really do feel that there is something that is valuable for them. And do you have a way for people to let you know what they are interested? In sure, they can about? email me anytime. If you, and that's a great point, Doctor Stan. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have questions or you have uh, some health issue or you know there's something out there you don't understand, you'd like uh, Doctor Stan to uh, talk about on Wednesday mornings. Email me, P Cook, P C O O K at whbc.com. I'd be more than happy uh, to ask him the questions, and you can email me anytime. Um, or message us on Facebook. We would love that too. So 
Um, thank you guys for coming thank today. You. Appreciate it. Tomorrow, Canton Regency, we will be at Canton Regency uh, for our health week as it continues tomorrow. And then it is, uh, let's see, Friday, Canton, it's um, Ohio Head and Neck. Ohio Head and Neck is on Friday. Uh, so we look forward to two more installments of health week on 1480 WHBC. This is Joe Cordell of Cordell and Cordell. Men, you fought hard.